see clearly or not, but oh, it is man. absolutely freezing. Hey guys, it's Storm Boy 13. Uh, very rarely do this, but there's barely anyone on the bus, so um, today's weather vlog is about the red moon. Um, now it's likely I'm going to be doing it in the evening time because I haven't had a chance to get any much information about it. I only know a certain things, so we'll see how it goes today. Um, so, um, we'll see how it goes. Roll the intros! too close because the camera's not waterproof. <laughs> it's just starting to clear away now. Oof, what a busy day it's been for me today. Hey guys, um, welcome to, I can't believe we're nearly there, nearly the end of the first season. Episode 27 of weather vlogging. I believe that's the right number. See, when you get the number increases, you tend to forget bigger numbers more easily. But I believe it's episode 27. Today's topic is about the red moon. Um, couldn't have had a chance to film today because I've been busy. Um, plus, I forgot what I was going to say, to be honest, so I didn't want to waste time. Um, date of filming is the 29th of November, 2016. The weather would have been a gorgeous day. Sunny, clear skies, but it's freezing cold. 4 degrees to maximum temperature, and uh, morning and evening, well below freezing. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you about some facts about the red moon slash lunar eclipse. Um, I'm obviously not going to tell you about the recent date, because that is part of the question. So, um, I'll mention that at the end. So, what I do know is, you know, a blood moon occurs during a lunar eclipse. When the shadow of the Earth creates an orange-red glow in the moon, the term blood moon is an isn't an astronomical term, but it's a term that has been popular on the internet as people watched two lunar eclipses in 2014 and prepared for the additional two in 2015. Must have been on the other side of the world or something like that in 2014. So, I'm going to give you 11 facts about last year's blood moon eclipse. I can tell you it was 2015, but I'm not mentioning the dates. So this is um, obviously a rare eclipse of the uh, supermoon. Um, as you know, full moon of last year's lunar eclipse is a supermoon. The moon will be closest to the Earth, or at its predatory. As it turns into a full moon, the rising super full moon can look larger and brighter to spectators on Earth. Total eclipses of super full moons are rare. According to NASA, they have only occurred five times in 1900, 1910, 1928, 1946, 1964, and 1982. Um, so obviously after last year's lunar eclipse, a supermoon eclipse will not happen again for another 18 years until October 8th, 2033. Interestingly, people, number two, people in the US will get front row seats. Uh, people in eastern and central areas of the United States and Canada will have some of the best views of the total lunar eclipse, um, obviously of the night of last year, weather permitting. Um, can't mention some of this. Uh, those on the west coast will miss the beginning stages of the eclipse because they will happen before moonrise. Um, obviously that will be the last total lunar eclipse visible for mainland USA until not long, January 31st, 2018. Late night and early morning eclipse, number three. Um, sorry. Uh, while North and South Americans will be able to see the eclipse after sunset on that day, People in Africa, Europe and Middle East can view it during the early hours of that day, before the sun rises. Right, I can I can, I can uh, show you on that. Uh, number four, uh, no need for eye protection. Uh, lunar eclipses can be spectacular and they are easy to see with the naked eye. Unlike solar eclipses, which require protective eyewear, lunar eclipses can be viewed without specialised eyewear. Uh, number five, a solar eclipse takes place two weeks before. There you go. Um, solar and lunar eclipses come in pairs. The lunar eclipse always takes place two weeks before or after a solar eclipse. Um, obviously last year's total lunar eclipse will be preceded by a partial solar eclipse um, 
I, I won't mention it again because it might give you a spoiler. Uh, but it was two weeks before that event. Uh, it's part of the Lunar Tree Trader number six. Obviously, last year's total lunar eclipse is the fourth and final eclipse in a series of four total lunar eclipses called Lunar Titar. Um, I can tell you the first three eclipses of the Titra took place on April 15th, 2014, October 8th, 2014, and April 4th, 2015. So I'll give you a new clue, it's before April. Uh, sorry, it's after April, ignore what I just said. So it's after April onwards. Um, notice something interesting about the dates. Um, each of the eclipses in the Titra occurs about six months apart and have five full moons between them. Um, lunar Titars can be rare in some centuries and can occur frequently in others. The 21st century will have about 8 lunar T-tards, the maximum number of lunar T-tards that can occur in a century. Uh, the last time this happened was in the 9th century. The next lunar T-tard of the 21st century will start with the April 25th, 20, 2032 total lunar eclipse. Um, number 7, and it's being called a blood moon. I can, see, I can show you the captions on there, it's safe to say. Um, in recent years, the term blood moon has been frequently used to refer to total lunar eclipses. You know, some sources suggest that the term stems from the Bible Christian pastors Mark Blitz and John Hagee claim that the eclipses of the 2014-2015 lunar titard fulfill a bi Bible goal for a forthcoming difficult and trying times. Um, however, astronomers do not use blood moon as a scientific term. However, though, you know, it's possible that the term came to describe total lunar eclipses because of the reddish colour the eclipse moon takes on during totality. This happens because of Rayleigh scattering, the same mechanism that causes colourful sunrises and sunsets. Um, and obviously, number eight, despite rumours, the world will, will not end or will never end. Um, the viewers of Pacers, Blitz and Hag gathered attention early 2014 because the eclipses um, in the T-Trad coincide with important Jewish festivals. Uh, the eclipses in April 2014 and April 2015 occurred at the same time as Passover, uh, while the October 2014 and this year, last year eclipses occurred during the Feast of Tyrannicals. don't know what it means. Some people took this coincidence as a sign of the end of times. Others have dismissed any apolitic... <laughs> well, we're, it's because of it's so cold outside today, my mouth's a bit gibberish. Uh, others have dismissed any apocalyptic significance of the T-Drat. Data of past eclipses showed that at least eight lunar tree charts have coincided with Jewish holidays since the first century. The Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar, and Passover always occurs around a full moon. Since a total lunar eclipse can only occur on a full moon night, it is very unlikely that eclipse will take place on or near Passover. Um, in conclusion, scientists and astronomers have found uh, no reason to believe that the current lunar T-Rad is a sign of the world to end. Even mainstream religious organisations have debunked these claims, so don't start hoarding end of the world supplies just yet. <laughs> and number nine, it will happen on Harvest Moon. So obviously lunar eclipse last year will occur during the Northern Hemisphere first um, full autumn full moon called the Harvest Moon. In many northern cultures, it is the full moon closest to the... Um, autumn equinox and is strongly significant. So on average the moon rises about 50 minutes later every successive day in the lunar month. Uh, the, the time period between two full moons or two new moons. In New York for example, new moon will rise at 6.50 and on September 13th, on September 14th the moon will rise almost 60 minutes later at 7.46am. Around the northern hemisphere harvest moon, this time difference between two successive moon rises decreases to about 30-40 minutes for a few days. New York, a full moon will rise at 6.36 p.m. on September 20, uh, convention dates. The moon will rise 40 minutes later, a couple of weeks later, 7.16 p.m. Um, the curious phenomenon, which is also sometimes called the harvest moon effect, occurs because the low angle that the moon's path around the Earth makes with the horizon during the northern fall autumn months. Um, might have given you a clue now. This effect reverses during the northern hemisphere spring. The large angle the lunar orbit makes with horizon ensures that the moon rises more than 50 minutes later around the northern spring equinox. Because seasons in the southern hemisphere are opposite to the seasons in the north, the harvest moon effect occurs around the southern fall autumn equinox in March. Number 10. It is part of Lunar as well as the series 137. Like solar eclipses, lunar eclipses tend to occur in 18 year long cycles called Soro cycles. Lunar eclipses separated by a Soro cycle share similar features including time of the year and the distance of the moon from the Earth. Eclipses that are separated by a Soro cycle 
are included in a Suave series. Obviously, last year's Lunar Eclipse belongs to Suave Series 137. It is the 28th eclipse in the last total Lunar Eclipse within a series of 81 Lunar Eclipses. The series began with a full number of eclipses back on December 17, 1564, and will end with another pre eclipse on, wow, April 20th, 2953. <laughs> uh, finally, number 11, it's the last eclipse of 2015. So you know 2015 has four eclipses, the minimum number of eclipses that can happen in the calendar year. Um, you know, last year, main lunar eclipse in the UK marks the last eclipse of the year. It will be preceded by a partial solar eclipse a couple of weeks before. The first eclipse of the year, total solar eclipse, took place on March 20th. Two weeks later, on April 4th, 2015, the first lunar eclipse of 2015 took place. Right. I think I'll stop there. I think that was plenty of information I've given today. But you kind of know what I mean now. Um, to be honest though, if most of you aren't keen on this um, astronomy stuff, scientific stuff, then you came to the right place to learn. Um, so, you know, I couldn't mention the dates, that's why I can only show some of the captions on there, and some of them had to show my face. But here's a question to today's weather vlog. Um, what date last year in the UK did we had a total lunar eclipse? Well, not total, but what date did we had a lunar eclipse? Um, comment below, you've got till uh, Saturday night or something like that, Sunday morning, and uh, I will feel the answer on Sunday when I do my weather forecast. So there you go guys, uh, tomorrow's weather vlog is drizzled to very heavy rain, I'll come up with some good information and stuff about that, probably even mentioning about last week Monday's event. Yeesh. Um, so yes, um, thanks for watching guys, uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, the storm is now out.